welcome you to the session on cyber security risk management in the zero trust era and we are honored to have with us mr shaktivel rajendran to talk here today and over to you sir thank you rati uh, for the introduction hi everyone uh, good morning uh, good afternoon or good evening depending on where you are uh, welcome to the session cyber security risk management in the zero trust era so you may be curious to know what this session is all about maybe i'll just uh, talk briefly about that uh, you know the uh, world economic forum uh, list cyber security risk as one of the global risk it's not just a risk to the corporations or organizations alone it's like a, a global risk like climate challenge or uh, employment issues so you know cyber security risk is uh, equated with that sort of a global challenges so in that given scenario it's important that you know the organizations understand their uh, cyber security risks and uh, take appropriate action so this session is going to talk about some practical aspects to perform uh, cyber security risk assessment and uh, how it can help the organization along the way uh, we also have some kind of a walk through or presentation of uh, these concepts so with that uh, let's get into the topic of the session uh, you know here is the agenda okay so we are going to talk about uh, primarily the current landscape because that understanding is important uh, to uh, go through the next uh, topics then we'll talk a little bit about the recent security breaches and in that context we bring in the new emerging concept uh, zero trust architecture and within the uh, zero trust architecture context what's risk management why it is important and uh, i will talk about three uh, uh, approaches to perform risk assessment in that case then we'll also talk about how to report uh, the risk assessment results to the management it may look overwhelming but it's very simple there are risks around and we are going to talk about uh, taking steps to manage that risk that's simple right so with that uh, let me get into the current landscape because this understanding is important for uh, to go through the next uh, slides and uh, rest of the session uh, as i mentioned the current landscape look like this okay imagine an organization it has a uh, office location and uh, which has uh, uh, you know the data centers which are located within that office location let's say that's the uh, local data center then we expand this with the uh, employee given the current uh, covid-19 pandemic situations almost major workforce is working from the remote uh, locations then we expand uh, our uh, network access to the third parties and partners and uh, the global local data center is also extended with the global data center then uh, we also have the cloud services you know the organizations boundaries uh, getting in expanded with the use of uh, cloud services then primarily why we are into the business because we want customers so then nowadays due to the digitalization the customers are also accessing the organization network so this is the current uh, landscape and uh, you know this is important to understand as we go through the next steps so let's uh, come back to the topic of uh, cyber security risk uh, risks us dollar 1 billion can you guess what this is yes this is fines and penalties paid by the organizations for cyber security breaches the reason for this can be any of this inadequate security processes or uh, technologies used in the organization or the techniques used by the unauthorized people are not detected by the organization's uh, security processes and uh, techniques it's not an overstatement and let's uh, take a look at some of the recent examples 500 million guest records i repeat 500 million guest records from a hotel chain were compromised in two different uh, breaches for the same organization then the ransomware incident which happened recently has forced a major pharmaceutical company to shut down its operation temporarily then we have another case of uh, 20 million customer records being compromised from one of the online retailers these things tell us one thing clearly the next target for cyber attack can be any of our organizations the cyber attack can come from multiple ways from unexpected sources even when the organization is not the actual target for the attacker 
on hindsight you know the all this uh, breaches indicate one thing clearly and uh, the causes which can be attributed to to those breaches are this few primarily inadequate monitoring for suspicious network access attempts via the uh, privileged uh, abuse and uh, uh, inadequate security hygiene and non protection of uh, data in storage as well as in transit so these are the major causes traditionally the security management worked with an idea like strengthening the organizational perimeter defense would increase the organizational security posture with the thinking that would minimize all the security risks to the organization however as i mentioned the landscape is currently evolving and changing dynamically because of uh, new and emerging technologies use of cloud services and boiod culture these are all completely changing apart from that we also allow uh, uninterrupted access to the partners and uh, customers to the organization network so in this context not making a critical evaluation of how the organization's uh, security works would teach a valuable lesson from a cyber security breach to the organization so in that context what we do about this if a current and traditional way of working is not going to protect the organization from the new and emerging methods used to test, uh, to steal the information then in the answer it lies in the fact that security management also must evolve in conjunction with the new developments happening around one of the emerging technologies or methods uh, which is uh, uh, helping in that area is a zero trust architecture a zero trust architecture is primarily about implementing controls in multiple layers so that even when a security breach happens the controls are taking care of that uh, damage that would happen to the organization so zero trust architecture is not a uh, uh, technology per se but it's a strategy it's used with the technological components the existing technological components sec and security controls can be used to operationalize that zero trust ar architecture strategy and it's important to remember that existing technologies used in the within within the organization can be leveraged for this purpose so then what is zero trust architecture zero trust architecture is in simply put it's a network design that implement uh, zero trust principles in the organization's network it includes applying granular access controls leveraging network segmentation and uh, uh, securing their data in transit all this sort of things this is primarily provided by the zero trust architecture implementation which implies that uh, zero trust principles are implemented in the organization the zero trust principles revolve around few of these major components as a seer the user device application network communication data monitoring and automation these components helps to embed security controls such as uh, uh, access controls and uh, device health security resilient application to respond to the abnormal behavior secure communication and uh, network segmentation and encryption of data these are all the parts with this uh, user and up to the data and then the monitoring part helps to detect and respond to the anomalies in real time and finally the automation it helps to automate uh, is incident alerting and remediation part so not all the zero trust architecture implementation are the same because every organization would have a different model of working and every organization is unique but here is a simplified view of the zero trust architecture just for the purpose of our discussion here you see the users device and application which is connecting to the organization's network to access the organizational information before giving access trust of those uh, users device and application is verified if it is validated then the access is granted to the requested resource this is a very simplified view of a zero trust architecture so now 
in order to implement the zero trust architecture in an organization it's uh, first of all important to understand the valuable assets of the organization asset i mean the it assets then we also need to understand the transaction flow then we need to develop the uh, trust policies and we also need to build a mechanism to monitor and maintain so that's one of the uh, things then the, in order to do that uh, risk risk management is essential as part of the zero trust architecture implementation the it also helps in zero trust architecture uh, uh, principles and also the develop uh, fine tune the trust approaches since the zero trust architecture is uh, uh, going to work on the around the existing technologies it's also important that the security posture of the existing security controls are also assessed as part of uh, zero trust architecture implementation finally the risk reporting and risk management makes it necessary to perform a risk assessment of the options on an unique basis so with that context we are getting into the next section of the session which is about uh, risk management so i am going to talk about three approaches to perform cyber security risk management the three approaches to cyber security risk management are strategic tactical and operational strategic approach is about effectiveness of uh, enterprise controls including controls in the perimeter level such as uh, firewall intrusion prevention system prevention systems and uh, security gateway then we have uh, tactical controls tactical approach is about uh, effectiveness of security controls to meet the requirements of the business unit departments or functions within an organization please remember there will be multiple business units within an organization with its uh, unique needs for security depending on the information handled by that uh, internal entity third approach is about operational approach operational approach focus on effectiveness of system specific technical controls to withstand cyber security attacks when prevention controls offered by the strategic and uh, tactical layers are bypassed examples include building resiliency into the application which are used in the organization so now before we go further let me uh, give a visual representation of how the three approaches to cyber security risk management look like castle how many of you went into the castle before anyway even if you did not go let's take a look at it the castle are built to resist the attack attempts from the enemies in the olden days so now it has a thick walls as you see here it has uh, towers and battlements and moats in some cases this is a good analogy to understand the three approaches to cyber security risk management the outer layer which pro provides the overall protection to the organization or to the uh, castle is equivalent to our strategic approach then inside the castle you have each private area which is equivalent to the business units within an organizational context and which has its own protection needs this is our tactical approach then inside the castle there are all area equivalent to the applications commonly used within an organization though the outer layer provides protection the general area inside the castle needs to be resilient to withstand attacks and this is part of our operational approach i hope this provides little more clarity on the three approaches to cyber security risk management okay let's get into the next one so as we go through the three different approaches i am going to ask you to visualize this uh, scenario this uh, imaginative company called uh, mnc uh, which is a manufacturing organization with multiple business unit wherein each of the business unit is having its own portfolio of products which are located across different continents and which has uh, research and development units manufacturing environment data centers which are extended with cloud service providers and also the third party service uh, uh, providers coming in via as uh, integrated supply chain providers so now imagine this uh, scenario this will help us to really understand uh, you know the uh, approaches i'm going to talk about and using that we are also going to perform 
uh, risk management for this uh, fictitious organization. And along the way, there is a kind of a walkthrough also how we apply each of these concepts. Then we'll uh, talk about how to build a threat profile, then how to establish a repeatable model to perform a cybersecurity risk assessment. Okay, are you ready to move to the next session, which is an interesting one? The strategic approach in the cybersecurity risk management. As I mentioned, the strategic approach to cybersecurity risk management is about identifying control weakness in the perimeter level, because which are commonly managed or centrally managed and which is relevant across the, all the organization. In order to do so, it's important to understand the organization's business objectives, because we are talking about strategic approach. So it's also important that we understand the organization's business objectives. Apart from the business uh, objectives, other factors we need to take into consideration as part of our uh, uh, strategic approach to risk management is uh, primarily the information and data handled by the organization's ID systems. If the information and data are handled, who are the threat actors that are interested in accessing the uh, information and data from the IT systems? Then how likely the threats are going to enter into the organization's infrastructure? And what are the different kind of threats we have seen in the past based on the incident uh, data available within an organization? Then we also going to look at what's the damage that could happen to the organization if any of the threat actors exploit any vulnerability and a threat becomes a risk, then we also need to look at what are the existing controls which are safeguarding the organization from the threat and threat actors. Then finally, we also need to look at which of the existing controls require impro uh, requires improvement uh, so that you know it continue to provide uh, protection to the organization from the onslaught of attackers. Answering this kind of questions would help us to develop a threat profile to the organization. Data to develop a threat profile to the organization can come from internal and external sources. External sources of data for building a threat profile comes from outside of the organization, which include uh, ISACs, which are relevant to the organization's line of business. You know, for each of the industry, there are uh, specific ISACs you can see something related to healthcare industry, something related to retail industry, something related to electricity. For all the line of business, there are ISEC, Information Sharing and Analysis Center. Primarily, they collect the different risks and uh, seen in this organization and share it with their peer group. Then we also have a Verizon Data Breach Investigation Report that provides a good indication of the uh, risk happening around the world. Every year, they publish a report. Then the advisories, uh, which come from agencies like CERT. Uh, then finally, we also have the threat reports coming from the vendors. Then uh, also we have open source uh, community sharing of uh, intelligence on cybersecurity risk. So these are some of the sources to build a threat profile for the organization from external sources. Then the data to build a threat profile for the organization from internal sources, which include primarily the business objective of the organization, as we spoke before, then the security risk, which might injure that uh, business objectives. And another important data is uh, the post incident data, because that would provide an indication of uh, frequently attacked assets from an external perspective. And uh, what are the attack methods used by the uh, threat actors when they are trying to exploit the organization? Then finally, we also need to gather the organizational's network topology and the security architecture, because this would tell us where exactly the controls are operating and which layers it's operating. So this is you know, the second source, the internal source to build a threat profile for the organization. So when we build a threat profile using the uh, different sources, it uh, helps to define the relevant threats to the organization. Once the relevant threats to the organizations from a strategic purpose, uh, perspective is defined, then it, a risk-based approach helps in prioritizing the relevant threats, which are very important, and uh, take a focus on the appropriate uh, remedial action. 
so this is about uh, the strategic approach so i was speaking a bit so now let me give a kind of a quick uh, demonstration of how this works Okay, that's a quick uh, demonstration of how the strategic approach to cybersecurity risk management works. Now, let's get into the second topic, the tactical approach. The tactical approach uh, deals with the effectiveness of uh, security controls to meet the uh, business uh, requirements from the business unit or departmental perspectives. As I mentioned, these business units and uh, departments are uh, internal entities which are operating within the uh, organization but they have different security needs because they support different uh, business objectives of the organization so in order to perform a tactical uh, assess risk assessment to determine the security risk to the business entities which are operating within the organization we need to determine the scope and objectives and which includes something like you know the security risk drivers for the internal entity an example for this include security regulatory compliance requirement for the information handled by the uh, internal entity it may be something like a personal data credit card data or something a valuable information for the organization itself then the second step is a determination of it assets which are specifically used uh, by the internal entity or some of the common it assets used by that internal entity to meet its business objectives then the information handled by such assets to meet or uh, to support the business objective of the internal entity and uh, the different uh, data flows for that internal entity and finally we also need to look at uh, threat information both external and uh, internal sources which we discussed before in our uh, strategic approach that information again can be leveraged for the purpose of tactical risk assessment also using this approach when we determine the top level threats which are relevant for the uh, uh, internal entity the next step is uh, prioritization of uh, the top threats and uh, then focus on the remediation you know this is a very quick view of the tactical approach and again in order to give some more clarity here is a quick walk through on that
So oh, that helped you to understand the concept of uh, tactical risk assessment. We looked at the business objectives of uh, the internal entity and uh, try to uh, get the relevant threats for it. Then when we performed a prioritization of those. Okay, so now that brings us to the third approach, operational approach. This is a very interesting one because uh, it has a lot of uh, operational components involved in it. Operational approach to cybersecurity risk assessment is important because nowadays the IT solutions and uh, applications used within an organization is not completely residing within the organizational boundary. Even if it's hosted within the organization data center, when the enterprise perimeter level controls are bypassed, the attackers would breach the application and connect a database to steal the information. Thus, it becomes very important for us uh, to make sure that the operational controls are embedded into the application itself. So the application is resisting the attack until the intrusion detection systems uh, notify the appropriate personnel for incident management. So now it's easy to say, but to be, in order to operationalize that, we need to really think uh, how to do that. Okay, imagine an organization is having thousands of applications to support uh, different business requirements of the organization. Unless a repeatable model exists, it's very difficult to perform security posture assessment of those applications uniformly. And at this point of time, you need to really remember that uh, vulnerability management alone will not identify all risks relevant to the application because the vulnerability management would identify only the vulnerabilities used in the components, but it will not find the design flaws. So yes, our recommendation is to use a simplified design review and the threat model concepts, wherein you use a predefined threats which are mapped with appropriate controls so that uh, we can establish a repeatable model for uh, cybersecurity risk assessment. The repeatable model for cybersecurity risk assessment from the operational perspective would look like this. First, you have the IT assets, which may include your uh, server, application, database, network, hosting environment, and infrastructural components, including the cloud uh, service usage the IT assets, that's mapped to the controls. That's one mapping. Then we do additional mapping. Mapping the controls with the relevant threats. This is another mapping. Then mapping of the threats with the different vulnerabilities. Or in other words, okay, uh, threats, which are the threats can uh, well, exploit which of the vulnerabilities. Again, these are a kind of a predefined list. So we make this mapping. So when we make this mapping, and uh, use this mapping mapped uh, framework for performing an evaluation of IT application from the cybersecurity perspective in the operational side, that would indication risk. I will tell you how this would work. When a control is missing, it would enable the threat to abuse the vulnerability in the IT asset. When the threat abuses a vulnerability, then it would indicate a risk. So that's as simple as that that I am giving you another uh, walkthrough or demonstration.
Okay, that's the end of the demonstration for uh, cybersecurity risk assessment in, from operational perspective. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it provided the instant results based on the predefined questionnaire responses. And this also brings us uh, towards the uh, end of our session. So before we conclude, uh, let's summarize what we learned in this session. First, uh, we spoke about uh, the global risk, uh, uh, cybersecurity being a global risk and uh, what organizations can do about it. And one of the emerging uh, areas in that respect is a zero trust architecture. In order to implement zero trust architecture, uh, the performance of uh, risk management is essential. And from that perspective, we spoke about uh, three approaches to perform risk assessment to an organization, strategic, tactical, and operational. Each are addressing uh, different needs or different perspectives from a cybersecurity angle. Then other part, which is very important to understand and uh, it's very important for all of us is, you know, the technical side, we perform the risk assessment, but when we report it to the management, they may not really understand all your technical organs and everything. So in order to make sure that the relevant management and decision makers understand the risk uh, that would come from the uh, security side. We need to really map and uh, map our technical risk to the organizational risk. And here is that how I have done it. So you see the uh, NIST uh, CSF category, uh, identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And all the identified technical risks are mapped to this uh, NIST CSF category. This is for all the technical people and uh, all the security professionals to understand. Then we also have additional mapping, okay, Map linking this uh, technical risk to the organizational risk. So primarily the organization risk can be any operational downtime due to that business is not able to support the customers, data breaches, and because of that fines and penalty and business disruption, non-compliance with regulations, and mainly the financial loss to the organization. So this is how we link all the uh, results which we get from the uh, cyber risk assessment into the organizational risk for easy understanding to the management. Then performing this uh, 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 three-layered approach of uh, cybersecurity risk assessment primarily enables uh, the organization to understand the overall security posture and uh, it enables to make appropriate decision on the risk management side. Then that also brings uh, to the next step uh, because uh, you were listening to almost lost 35 minutes or so. So now call for action. I ask you to do three things. Uh, first, okay, so irrespective of your role in your organization, you may be a security engineer, you may be a security auditor or a security architect or whatever it is. The risk management is essential in everyone's uh, role even in professional as well as in, even in our real life, uh, personal lives also. So now the ask is, could you try applying the risk management principles you learned? That is uh, three approaches in the area of your work. Okay, this is a kind of a stretch thing for you and uh, the results, whatever it comes up from there that you can use for your work. Then the second thing, okay, if your company is a publicly traded company, you will have the annual report which would be available and which would be shared with the uh, uh, you know, uh, Security Commission or Security Exchange Board of India, that kind of organization. And use that information uh, and convert that information, what you find from the annual report into a kind of high-level network view 
and build a threat profile to your organization and also link whatever the risk you foresee into your uh, organizational objectives and risk. 